Welcome to Mastering Solutions. In this problem, we're going over motion with constant acceleration. And so they say, what constant acceleration in SI units do we have to have for a car to go from zero to 60 in 10 seconds? And then what fraction of G is this and how far is it traveled in that? So they give us zero to 60 miles per hour. So we need to convert the 60 miles per one hour into SI units. So to do that, we have our good old friend dimensional analysis. So we want miles down here on the bottom so that they will cancel out. And we want to go into meters. So I'm using a conversion from the useful data section at the beginning of the book where they give you miles to meters straight. So you don't have to do a bunch of different conversions, you know, like miles to feet and then feet to cent uh, inches and then inches to centimeters, et cetera, et cetera. So they say in one mile, there is 1609 meters. So now we have miles to meters on top, which is what we want, and we want hours to seconds. This one is the exact same thing. In that useful data section, they tell us that one hour is 3,600 seconds. So now the hours will cancel and we have meters on the top, seconds on the bottom, which is what we need. So now we'll multiply 60, and if it's on the top, we will multiply it. If it's on the bottom, we'll divide by it. So 60 times 1609 divided by 3600. So 60 multiplied by 1609 divided by 3600 gives us 26.82 26.82 meters per second. Whenever you have a number that is not the final number that you're looking for, you want to use as many values as you can. It will give you a more precise number at the very end. So I'm going to go to two. I think it's okay for this problem. So now that we have this in SI units, now we can go ahead and figure out for part A what the acceleration needs to be to go from zero to 60 in 10 seconds. So acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. And we just figured out the velocity in standard units is 26.82 meters per second divided by 10 seconds. So now we'll have meters per second per second or meters per second squared, which is what we need for acceleration. And if we're dividing by something by 10, we could also just move the decimal place over. So that'll be 2. 0.68 meters per second squared, and we'll round that to 2.7. So for part A, there is our answer. For part B, they want us to figure out what fraction of G is this. So what we'll be doing is we'll be taking that acceleration that we found and dividing it by gravity. So now we have 2.7 meters per second squared divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. So now the meters per second squared will cancel and we'll be left with a ratio of how much the acceleration is to the gravity. So that we have 2.7 divided by 9.8 gives us 0.275. So it's essentially 27, you could round it to 28, percent, so we'll just say 27.5% of gravity, or 27%, 27.5% of G. And now for the last one for part C, we want to figure out how far the car traveled when it reaches that 60 miles per hour, and we have to give it in both SI units and feet, so they're just trying to make it more difficult for us, but it's good practice. So now for part C, we'll be using the kinematic equations. And the one that we have all the information and the variable that we're looking for is this one here. X final is equal to X initial plus the initial velocity times the time plus one half the acceleration times the time squared. And now if we go through this, we're starting from rest. We're starting from zero. And so X initial is zero. The initial velocity, since we're starting from zero, is also zero. So this whole section goes away. So now what we're left with is the x final, what we need, is equal to one half the acceleration times the time squared. So now if we plug this in, we have x final is equal to 
one half, the acceleration, which we just found was 2.7 meters per second squared. And then we'll multiply that by the time, which we said is 10 seconds squared, gives us 0.5 times 2.7. You could also use 2.68 if you wanted to be more precise like we were talking about earlier. And we'll multiply that by 10 squared. So we have 135. I'm just curious if we used 2.6834. So yeah, um, very close within margin of error, but we'll use the more precise one, the 134. So it went in that 10 seconds, 134 meters but they also asked us to put that into feet. So now we need to convert it. So we have 134 meters and doing dimensional analysis, we have one meter is equal to 100 centimeters. So now the meters will cancel. And now we want to go from centimeters to English. So we'll go to inches. So one inch is 2.54 centimeters. Now centimeters cancel when we're in inches. And lastly, we want to go from inches to feet. So inches will be down here and feet will be on the top. So in one foot, there are 12 inches. And now we have what we need. So we'll take 134, multiply it by the numbers all the way straight across. If it's on the top, you multiply. If it's on the bottom, you divide. So we have 134 multiplied by 100, and then we'll divide that by 2.54 to put us into centimeters, and then we'll divide that again to go from inches to feet. So we have 134 meters, and then we'll multiply that by 100 to go from meters to centimeters. Now we're gonna divide by 2.54 to go from centimeters to inches, and then divide by 12 to go from inches to feet, which is what we wanted. And so that gives us 439.6 or 440. So now we know the distance that the car went in those 10 seconds, not only in feet, but also in meters for SI units.